Warning, this is not your normal bottle digging channel. Side effects of this video may include a strong desire to co-host. Viewer discretion is advised. No, well, still digging away here, trying to clean this hole out some more. This lid just come out. Looks to be in pretty good condition. I don't see any chips or anything on it. Chips or cracks, looks pretty good. Interesting shape. Always like to keep the different lids. Got quite a collection of them there now. <laughs> Maybe I'll show my lid collection sometime. Anyways, no time to talk about lids. Let's uh, got to keep on digging. I got a little round ink, folks. Just come out from up underneath that rock there. I haven't had very good luck with inks down here lately. They've all been cracked. But uh, this one here so far looks pretty good. Interesting top on this one too. I don't see any embossing. And it's looking like it's maybe machine made. I don't know, that's kind of hard to tell. Base embossed. What does that say? Waterman's. Waterman's Inc. Canada. Nice flared look on that. Neat design. Alright, let's keep digging. Got one in the back of the hole, folks. It's just the base of it sticking out. Looks like a little square one. Let's go in, I'll see. It's right there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Right there. There it is. What is it? Uh, it's just a little contents bottle, probably an extract or something. Something along those lines. Oh, hey, I've got to get a perm. Oh, by the way, a picture of loveliness, isn't it? <laughs> Today's recipe is very involved apple pie. <laughs> but wait to see the way I make it. A couple more in the hole, folks. Got the light on this time. Might be getting into a little pocket of them here. There's one here. It's one of those Celt perfumers. Nice little bottle. It's embossed. Yep. Hard to see it with the light shine on it. And here's another one here. And that just looks to be looks to be a slicker. Neat little shape though. Looks to be blown as well. Could be wrong though. Hmm. Don't see anything else right off hand, but uh, kind of looks like I'm getting into a pocket of them. Whew. Looks like a guillotine up there. I washed my head. Lots of brick in here too. Over and out. There's the next one, folks. It looks like one of those Horner bottles. But uh, it's not embossed, it's a slick one, if it is. I'll have to get a better look at it, maybe keep it and clean it up. But I got one in the hole here, too. We're running out of daylight here, too. There's a panel side one here. Ah, uh, the neck snapped off it. Oh, it's Charles H. Fletcher Castoria bottle. Nothing. Okay. Ooh. Looks like I got a shaving mug in the hole here, folks. Right in the side wall, right in the back. There it is right there. Huh. 
Ah, uh, the back of it cracked out of it, busted up. That would have been nice. Yeah, you got some lettering on the base there. Stamp of some sort. Uh, I can't make it out. No, can't make it out. Alright, and now we start to mix. Now we need a little more. Oh, hold it, somebody's in the store. <laughs> It's my ugly sister. <laughs> what? What, the green fell upstairs? Oh, that's Igor. And you just forget about it. He's mine. Can't stand that chick. <laughs> hey. Just pop this one out, folks. Can't quite make out what it says. Tornades, maybe? Kitchen bouquet. Got a nice bluish color to it. I'd say early machine made. And uh, I got something else in the hole here too. Could take a while to get out. There's some cork tops pieces coming out. But uh, this thing is freaking huge. Check it out. It's like an aqua blue or a greenish color. I don't know if that's the bottom or if it's the side or what. I hope it's whole. I hope it's complete. Looks like it is. Looks like it is. Okay, looks like it's ready. Here we go. Oh, nice old liquor bottle. Wow. Oh, trip over my right getting out of here. Oh man, check this out folks, check that out, wow, what a beautiful shape, design, there's no embossing on it, God, I wonder if that's, I wonder if that's blown, sure looks like it, wow, nice looking bottle, holy moly. Yes, sir. Nice bottle. Got a big old bottle on the side of the wall here, folks. Looks like a mason jar, but let's pull it out and see. See that there? Oh. Whoa. Is it embossed? No, are you kidding me? Must be just a big old slick food jar. No, nope, that's not embossed. Frick. We're all going tonight. I got a little cognac and egg bottle here too. I don't think you can see it very well. I didn't even see it. I've been standing on it, stepping on it. Walking on it. But anyways, there it is. I think the lid's on it too. Little screw top one. I think we're losing uh, sunlight here uh, very quickly. <laughs> All right. Deep dark hole there. <laughs> I got another old bottle. It looks like in the back here. I'll try to remember next time I come down this lake to bring a flashlight with me. Okay, right here. It's in there pretty good too. Looks like the shape of a ketchup bottle, but it doesn't say anything on the base of it. Hopefully. It's something other than a ketchup. It's in there pretty good. Here we go. Oh, there's a it's a big old pickle jar. Huh. Oh well. Right on. Oh, what's this here? Oh, just a 
top off on. Okay. Okay, folks, I'm going to get out of here for tonight. It's getting really dark here, so i got a bunch of stuff here, and I'll pick and choose a bunch of them to take home for the cleanup. A lot of them I didn't show uh, digging or whatever, so uh, pulling out of the hole, so tune into the cleanup and check them out. Over and out. Good day, my awesome viewers. Thanks for joining me here for another bottle digging recap. Appreciate everybody taking the time to tune in. And as usual, I've got some other antics going on in the recap portion of the video. And today I visited a secondhand record store. I'm going to show you what records I picked up here before we get into the bottles. And here is the first one David Wilcox, My Eyes Keep Me in Trouble. And this one was 1983. Anybody ever listen to David Wilcox? There's the songs there. It's a pretty good album. And I paid 99 cents for that. How could you beat it? Yes, folks, I do still have a record player. Anybody else collect records? Here's a second one. Trooper. Hot Shots. This is a compilation album. $1.99. This is a Canadian band, and they got... Uh, Lots of good hits on there. And this one uh, was put out in, I'm going to say, 1979, possibly 1980. Lots of great hits on that one. If you're not familiar with those, check them out. And finally, here's one that I've just recently become familiar with, is Uriah Heap. Now, I've uh, heard of them before in the past, but uh, only recently I've started listening to them. That's a little foreshadowing for the future. But I paid 10 bucks for this one. It's in very good condition, as you can see there. It's live, 1973, two album set. And I can't wait to uh, put those on the old record player and have a listen to. So the second order of business, folks, before we get into these lovely colored models, is this one right here which is called The Kraken. Release the Kraken. And this is a dark spice drum or a black spice drum. 47% alcohol or 94 proof. $18 for 375 milliliters. And this puppy was introduced in 2010. And the base rum is from Trinidad and distilled from molasses made from locally grown sugar cane and it's aged one to two years and I've already got a pretty good start on this bottle I might have a couple drinks left in it and the bottle is styled after a Victorian style rum bottle with the, these handles on the side here now apparently they used to hang these up by the handles so they wouldn't uh, fall over and break I'm guessing like on ships so that's an interesting little bit of info I got a drink right here that I'm working on. Okay, folks, let's get into these bottles here before we waste any more time. And we'll start with this lovely aqua blue colored bottle. Check it out. There's no base markings, but uh, there's some sort of pecklin bottle. Machine made, lovely color, and it's in perfect condition. Now next we'll go to this uh, Buckley's bottle, which always, these always have strong embossing on them. Check out the nice embossing on that. Now Buckley's itself was introduced in Canada in the 1920s. Okay, and then it was introduced in the United States in the 1930s. And this base mark is Dominion Glass, which started in 1928. That D in the diamond, Dominion Glass, 1928. So we know it's after that, and this broken thread pattern up here, you can see it's broke there and broke there, is indicative of the late 1920s, early 1930s. So between that and that, we know it's 
you know, that's a pretty safe bet. Late 1920s, early 1930s. That's a pretty good age on that one. And next up is this beauty of a bottle here, folks. Well, it's still got the cork in there. I just want to give you a, a full view of that bad boy there. It is blown in a mold with a with an applied lip. We'll get folks a little better here. So you can see that. And these are recessed here. Can you see that? See how that's recessed? Down in there and in there. And I suspect that so you can grab it like that. Well, I could be wrong and pour it or drink it or whatever you want to do. There's no base marks. And I'm not 100% sure, but uh, this is possibly is a W.A. Gilby gin bottle, a real early one. Don't ask me why I think that, but uh, that's what I'm thinking. Could be anything. If anybody's got any clues, feel free to say in the comment section. Look at the color. What a great color. That was a nice bottle. Big old bubbles in it too. Check it out. Early bottle. It's got to be 1890s. Which reminds me, folks, I was recently talking to a friend of mine, and she's a bartender down at the local pub here, and she was telling me that she's recently split up with her uh, boyfriend, but he keeps asking her for another shot. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> Next up is another lovely colored aqua blue bottle. Unfortunately, the only embossing on it is on the base. It is another machine made one. And there's the base. It's a kitchen bouquet bottle. And that's a sauce bottle. And they go back possibly as far as the 1880s. It's like a condiment sauce. Nice colored bottle. This one here is just an amber blown in a mold. Tooled lip. No embossing on it. Little number on the base there. There that is. Then we got another slicker here, but it is blown in a mold with a tooled lip and it's a little bit crooked. It's a nice shape. I don't think it's manganese glass, but it might end up being, it's hard to tell. Might be a little too early to tell on that one. Then we got a Cognac Monet. A screw top bottle. The dragon on the face here. These are fairly common around this area. Let's put that lid on it. Normally it would have had a metal lid. Nice silver metal lid. This here I suspect is a lid. But I'm not 100% sure. It was in uh, perfect condition, whatever it is. And I kept it. A milk glass. Here's another lid. I suspect this is off a teapot. You got your hole there in the top for steam to escape. In great condition. And then we got the uh, Waterman's Ink. Lots of base embossing on this. And this one has quite a flared lip on it, which I don't normally find on them, but this one does for some reason. It is machine made, but that's kind of unique as far as I can tell, that flared lip on it. So last but not least, folks, is this little Selleck Perfumer bottle. New York and I found several of these in the past but this is the first time I found a blown one the seam ends just up there around that dirty mark so it's uh, blown in a mold with a tool lip and I was happy to get that one cool little bottle no base markings and also this bottle here 
is now empty. <laughs> but not to fear, folks, because the captain is in the house. And I'm going to be joining the captain in his quarters here very shortly. Okay. Well, I got to split, folks. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned. There's plenty more videos to come before spring hits. And we'll be getting to some new digs after that. So, over and out, folks. Have a great day.